And next, Theodore Gherkin has focused his speech on the second space race. Last spring, Carl Craig and his wife embarked on a road trip to see something that they had always wanted to, a rocket launch. As the New York Times explains, on April 30th of that year, they drove all the way from their home in Colorado to a SpaceX launch pad in Texas, determined to see a rocket representing millions of dollars invested in space finally come to completion and reach the heavens. But as the New York Times further explains, as the rocket went up and up and up, its tip began to glow red, began to smoke before finally exploding over the crowd. Carl was shocked, but he wasn't the only one watching. Because as the Washington Post explains on June 20th of that same year, America's investments in space don't stand alone. Instead, they've been complemented and spurred by Chinese investments to do the same with the Chinese government pledging $8 billion to not only recreate American achievements in space, but move beyond them. Most menacingly, China has promised to put weapons orbiting the Earth that could strike at any corner of our nation. So considering that though the USSR no longer exists, the space race seems to be just getting started, and this time, America her allies, and the lives of millions of their citizens are at risk. It is a matter of both national and international security. Do we consider whether we're about to win or lose? But fortunately, the answer is that the United States has the lead that we will convert to victory because we are spurring a decentralized revolution. First, because we are allowing private companies to lead the charge. Second, because we are working with other nations from around the world. And third and finally, because we are moving beyond the moon. Well, Carl Craig was certainly disappointed that the rocket he had always longed to see had exploded above his head. One SpaceX employee diplomatically said, at least it was exciting. And he wasn't wrong because the first way that we can see that we are going to win this race is because we are allowing private companies to take the lead. As the Council on Foreign Relations, a think tank explains in September of 2021, NASA during the first space race dedicated 80 to 90% of its budget to contractors that they worked directly with, meaning that the United States production capacity was directly tied to our government's managerial capacity. But now, We've reallocated almost all of this money to prizes so that private companies can compete among themselves, building achievements in the hope of receiving that government money. And it's already starting to give us a lead. Because War on the Rocks explains, from just this year, the United States, out of the 5,000 satellites in orbit, controls over 2,700, an enormous lead over the rest of the world, not to mention China, that continues to grow year after year. We have more capable rockets that can build larger payloads. We have the infrastructure to support whatever missions we want. And it bears remembering, the space race is a race, and one that the United States has the lead in, and that will only continue to accelerate. Well, the rocket's explosion was most immediately impactful. To those who are watching it, people from far beyond Colorado were looking at the results. Because the second way that we can see that the United States is poised to win this second space race is because we're working with countries from around the world. As a report from the Office of NASA's Inspector General on January 19th of this year finds, while NASA in the past created technology as state secrets designed to keep it out of the hands of the USSR, now we're designing technology specifically in collaboration with allies from around the world from Australia to New Zealand to Europe to the UK to Canada, which doesn't just give us a research advantage, it gives us a military advantage as well. As War on the Rocks tells us, this time in 2020, if China threatens to put weapons into orbit, 
that could be a serious threat to American national security. Because as opposed to conventional intercontinental ballistic missiles, they don't have to be launched from a fixed position. They can be anywhere in the atmosphere, which means that our defenses need to be everywhere. So American kinetic defenses, as well as our cyber defenses, can't just be employed on our soil. They need to be employed in partner countries around the world that thankfully we are working with to protect civilians of all of our nations, from London, England, to Clinton, New York. At 80 years old, Carl Craig is old enough to remember the moon landing, being glued to his TV as he watched the accomplishment of man. And perhaps the first generation is already among us that will get to see a landing on Mars. Because the third way, that we can see that the United States is going to win this next space race, is because we're putting the moon behind us. As the Mars Exploration Project, a division of NASA explains on their website retrieved just today, the United States mission to the moon was just that, a mission. During the first Cold War, we viewed it as a stepping stone, not as the end goal. And so today we're continuing to build on those achievements, not just reaching prestige goals like sending a man into space, but utilitarian ones, building settlements and habitats on the moon, Mars, and bodies from around the solar system. But China is still stuck in the past. As Bloomberg explains, on June 29th of last year, their plans are mostly just to recreate American achievements. They want to send a man to space, to send a man to the moon, but they're not going to get the international prestige of doing something that America did decades ago. And when they do finally get to the utilitarian goals, America will have gotten there first. We'll have set up the habitats, the colonies, the infrastructure. And so America will get to decide what is done with that. Meaning that even if China runs the space race, they will be permanently locked behind the United States, running the race on our rules. And they certainly won't be allowed to win the gold. So considering that over the last decade, the United States has invested billions of dollars into reestablishing American primacy in space, it's important to once again wonder whether it's going to work. Unfortunately, once again, the answer is that it will because our investments are creating a decentralized revolution, allowing private companies to lead the charge, working with global partners around the world, and even moving beyond the moon. And so, while Carl Craig and his wife didn't take a road trip all the way down to Texas with the expectation that a rocket would explode above them, the SpaceX employee was right. It was dramatic. But more importantly, it was also a symbol of American ingenuity of American security at home.